thousands of apartments are reported to be vacant, leaving families without homes and creating unsafe conditions for neighbors. And no matter what the number is, no matter the number that you are hearing, it is unacceptable to, to have these units be vacant, to warehouse units. That is a classic harassment strategy also used by landlords to displace people when there is gentrification in a neighborhood or low vacancy and high rents. So no matter what the number is, no matter what the number is that you are going to hear today, it is clear from advocacy in my community and beyond that there is warehousing going on that is keeping habitable apartments off the market and that is unacceptable. Okay. All right, okay. so at the moment, we're, we're, we're looking forward to hearing the bill. It's gonna, it's gonna create a city reporting option to assist tenants in having a vacant units in their building inspected. And at the moment, tenants cannot get inspectors to come out to investigate vacant units that could be dangerous. And this bill aims to address that. Where housing also keeps housing units offline, we have to address the persistent housing crisis in New York City. There is no other way to do it. Bill by bill, conversation after conversation, initiative after initiative. So it's been reported that 80% of working class households in New York City are rent burdened. And the most recent community health profile released by the city indicates that in my district in the Lower East Side, 49% of households are rent burdened. And that you have to make a minimum of $150,000 just to live there. At the same time, a report by the Fund for the City of New York says to basically live anywhere in Manhattan, you have to be making over $100,000. That is not the reality for so many New Yorkers and in our cities, and a lot of us who would like to remain in the communities where we grew up, not all of us have that privilege or luxury, but we should be working to make sure that people at the very least have a roof over their head with satisfactory conditions and feel right. like they have a place in their community. So, I'm proud to support Speaker Adams and Chair Sanchez to advance the policies laid out in the Speaker's Fair Housing Framework. We also support the, the Mayor's initiative of the Unlocking Doors program. This is to allow for reimbursement for repairs for landlords who report to be financially constrained. We want everybody to be able to turn to the city in a reasonable way and receive the resources they need to bring these units back online. We want to be fair about this, but we have to be direct in addressing the crisis and who is being disproportionately affected. You're going to hear more from my colleagues on that now. I want to also recognize Council Member Lincoln Bressler, who also has bills before the council today. Um, I want to bring up Gail Brewer, who we all know has been a staunch advocate for affordable housing and the creation of it for many, many years. Today, because as we sit here, the state has to by midnight get in all of their bills. And I don't know exactly what they're going to be. I know the assembly is meeting at 7:30. The Senate is drafting as we speak. But warehousing will not be on that list. I don't know exactly what will be on that list, but warehousing will not. So it's incredibly important for us to pass this bill. Um, I want to say a couple of things. Um, I want to say that there's, we don't know the number. As Council Member Rivera said, we go from 2,500 to 90,000. Those are the numbers. And I passed the open data bill many years ago. I am all about the data. If we don't have the data, then we can't get people into the apartments as they should be. And that's why we're asking in this bill that if you call, the bill should mandate that if you call 311, you know that there's a vacant apartment, that vacant apartment would be inspected, and that apartment, and many times, could in fact be lived in, and that would be part of our process. But without that data, we cannot just make up numbers as the administration tends to do and as the landlord industry tends to do. But we are the ones who are more responsible because we want the data. Now, the second issue, of course, is why are all these apartments vacant, landlords? And to me, the answer is thank you, State, because I cannot thank you enough for passing the 2019 law. All of you helped with that. That 2019 law. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But when that law was passed, I think some of these owners said, okay, I'm just going to keep this apartment vacant. That is so wrong because they want to be able to grab it 
turn it into market rent and forget with rent stabilization, which is what we need with our affordable crisis in the city of New York. So this bill will, in a sense, hopefully also with an app. I'd love to see an app either tied to 311 or on its own so that when we collect all this data, we can put it in easily and then we would quickly know, because that's what apps do on a dashboard, exactly where they are and even their status. Does it need a new paint job? Does it need new electrical? What does it need? That's the kind of data with all due respect that this administration should also be asking for. Um, and uh, I want to just give you just some information. That we all know the housing vacancy survey exists and we find out that from 2017 there were 19,000 927. This is from one aspect of data. Again, I don't know where they get these numbers. And then 2021, it was almost 46,000. And we're way beyond that. We're up to 2023 now. I don't have the up-to-date information. So this increase is going to have, it has a huge negative impact on citywide rent prices. It has a huge negative impact on the quality of life in the buildings for all the reasons that you know. And of course, it, it really denies people a place to live. So I am so honored to be part of this with my colleagues. I always say to everybody, you can't make policy if you don't have the information and the data. And this is why this bill is so important. And then we'll get Albany to change the warehousing law. But first, we have to know what it is that exists in the city of New York. Thank you very much. The data, data-driven solution, it's pretty simple, and especially now, it's urgent. I want to call up uh, some of our friends from Los Sures, hey. Maribel Lopez, and uh, Laura
they were getting no service, no repairs. Folks have come into his building and asked to move into an apartment and they were told that there were no apartments available. Um, and these are ongoing issues that he's been dealing with and continues to deal with. And he just wants the proper support to be able to live in the apartment that he calls his home. My name is Maribel Lopez. Um, I'm a tenant organizer at Salsa United of Sures. Uh, prior to me coming to Salsa United um, to work, I am also a tenant. So I can relate to every single issue that these tenants are going through. I want to express the concern that we have with the old warehousing that's going on throughout the city. We have a lot of families that need these apartments and they're denied these apartments, unfortunately, for greedy landlords. So we need the uh, I-95 to really pass. It's very important to protect the tenants. It's very important to keep the city apartments occupied if they are available. And we really need help from the city agency. We need help from elected officials. Um, these tenants really need your help. And we really need everyone to step forward. Thank you. Thank you. anti-warehousing movement and really just to be here today is an honor there are a lot of upper west siders here in the house I see, you know, I see patricia lofman in the house i see sue sussman i see larry wood these are individuals in the upper west side who have given me access to some of the own warehousing that's happening in park west village in my district um, i've been to some of these apartments they're vacant there's a lot of Frankensteining that's happening where apartments are being combined to increase the, the property values and really resulting in the displacement of the people who live in this neighborhood and calls it home. And so, you know, these bills being put forward today by, by Gail and Carlina really is an important step for us to have the data so that we know where the warehousing is taking place so that we know where the inspections need to be done and required. And so the city has this information to really make sure that we know where to target bad actors. Warehousing is bad, it results in displacement, it's contributing to the lack of housing supply that the city desperately needs. And so, yes, this is what we're standing for. And we need Albany to come through as well when it comes to warehousing and imposing penalties. I know there's a bill in the state for that as well. But let's keep it going. Just want to thank my colleagues again for having me here today and the advocates. <laughs> Well, I'm going to bring up a, another organization that's doing work downtown, uptown. Uh, let's hear from Met Council. Is Anna here? Oh, Anna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Anna. I'm a tenant organizer with Met Council on Housing. And I'm speaking on behalf of the tenants of 705, 709 West 170th Street who had to be at work today. These buildings are owned by New York City's worst landlord, Daniel Oheb Shalom. Between the two buildings, there are 40 units. Half of those apartments are warehoused. I'm gonna say that again. Half of those apartments are warehoused. And even so, this building has over 700 open violations. Tenants are living in hazardous conditions. Falling bricks, regularly failing heat and hot water, exposure to bird and rat feces and mold. The vacant units in these buildings are even worse. Having been warehoused over 10 years, they are full of bird and rat feces. They are full of mold. Pipes are falling out of the walls and there are holes connecting one apartment to the next. Two months ago, a flood from a vacant apartment caused a ceiling to collapse in the bathroom of an elderly disabled tenant uh, in the bathroom of an elderly disabled tenant moments after she left the bathroom. 
This was after two weeks of daily calls to management and 311 demanding repairs. Tenet Oswaldo says, I'm tired of not knowing what else will break down. Last Christmas, one of our neighbors got flooded because a vacant apartment steam pipe broke. The fire department had to break into the vacant apartment to identify the issue and figure out what line to shut down. And I wanna add that these leaks run through light fixtures. In both of these leaks, they ran through light fixtures, which means tenants are not just at risk of ceiling collapse, they're at risk of electrocution and building-wide fires. The long unaddressed water damage in these apartments, combined with the animal feces, are making tenants sick. Tenant Lloyda asks HPD, how many accidents, leaks, fires, falling ceilings need to happen before you take responsibility for inspecting abandoned apartments? Inspection must be mandatory for our lives, safety, and well-being. Tenant Zikis adds, landlords who bought the building should do their job and maintain their properties, but that's obviously not happening. HPD's name is literally housing preservation, which would imply to me at least, that they should preserve properties that landlords don't. Gilbert, a tenant in the building, says, I believe it's important to pass intro 195 because it puts a check on slumlords that play the system at the expense of tenants. And I would like to close by saying that these tenants and tenants all over New York City deserve so much better, and intro 195 will help them get that. Thank you. makes me uncomfortable. So I just want to give a special shout out to my Brooklyn groups. Let's hear it for Uno and St. Nick. Let's hear it for the Los Unes Lucha. What about Millie and Thor? This is a citywide issue. It is a citywide crisis. And I'll tell you, just a few weeks ago, I joined Councilmember Gutierrez and Mr. Espinal on South 4th Street where we rallied outside of his building. And the, the units that are being kept vacant for months and years on end are undermining the conditions in buildings as a whole. So you have leaks, you have rats. You, the landlords are keeping these units vacant and trying to push out other tenants by letting the conditions deteriorate. It is wrong. What Councilmember Rivera's legislation will do is bring real accountability to these unscrupulous landlords. We need to make sure that if a condition of a vacant apartment is problematic, that HBD is on site in days, put it, imposing violations and making things better. This will make a real difference. But look, we know landlords have kept units vacant across New York City forever. They manage scarcity. They manage scarcity to rise up to raise their prices, and it's gotten worse during the pandemic. We need to do something about it. HPD and the Housing and Vacancy Survey estimated nearly 90,000 vacant rent-regulated units in our city today. And it, it is shameful at a time when so many of our neighbors are struggling to get by. In my district, a quarter of tenants pay a majority of their income in rent. But if you go to Pierina Sanchez's district in the West Bronx, a majority of tenants pay a majority of their income in rent each and every month. It is shameful especially when we have potentially 90,000 vacant, deeply affordable apartments in our city. HCR, the state agency estimates 60,000. The private landlords have said 20, maybe 30, 40,000. We don't know. We need the data. Oh, yes. As Gail yes. Brewer likes well, to say, no. bring the data. Give me the data. So that's what our legislation will do. We would ensure that HBD captures the number of vacant apartments in New York City each and every year. And if the, vacant is, is, if the apartment is vacant, then we need that landlord to give us reasons for how they're making it habitable ASAP. 
Housing is for people. It is a absolute disgrace that we have tens of thousands of vacant affordable housing units in the face of a housing crisis. But it's not just rental apartments that we need to be tracking. We also need to be tracking office real estate. We know that about one in five offices in New York City are vacant. They are sitting there vacant. We need the real data, building by building, square footage by floor by floor, square feet by square feet. We need to understand how we can transform these vacant commercial buildings into the housing that we need. But it's impossible to devise the right policy solutions if we don't have the underlying data. Oh, really? <laughs> We're on it together. So all of us are united as a front together that we need better data. We need to, we need now HPD to gather the data for vacant commercial office space for vacant residential units so that we can make sure that every available ounce of space in New York City, every available square foot of space in New York City is filled by the people who need it. There is just no reason that we should be setting up migrant shelters in jails, in warehouses, in school gymnasiums. There's no reason that we should have 4,000 vacant NYCHA apartments today or 3,000 vacant supportive housing units or 90,000 vacant rent regulated units. Well, we each and every each and every one of these examples is a shame on Mayor Eric Adams. It is a disgrace. It is a failure of management. We need accountability. The legislation that we're hearing today can make a real difference. Let's get it passed. Thank Yay. you all. Yay. 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 in the council my first year we took on airbnb to get the data for all of these short-term rentals and illegal hotels that were taking units out of the housing stock that remains ongoing but again this is part of a comprehensive fight coming from every single angle to make sure every unit that is available and able to be inhabited is available to a family a family who needs it these are people these are people that need homes. All right, I'm gonna bring up a Queen Mother Blakely very, very briefly, follow, and then followed by my friends at Cooper Square, who I love dearly. Woo! Yes. Has been living in low-income housing for over close to 40 years. I'm in living. Now I'm an elder over 80 years old. We are dealing with predatory lending and mortgage fraud. And I would say to Gail, it's been on it with us in the court system. And I say yeah. to you, statistics is very important. Who's being warehoused in the house where I live in Harlem? And I say to you, our representatives in the city council move forward with the voice of the people and say they have a right for quality care and housing. That is a human right. And we say to you, save our home since we have invested in our home. Many of us over 40 years, low income housing, and we are here to support you from all of the communities that are in New York, fair housing, quality housing, justice for housing, and I yield the chair back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are sophisticated in Manhattan. What can I say? Uh, but this is it. This is right. This is from Los Sures, Harlem, Lower East Side, the Bronx. I want to thank. Uh, Benina Sanchez, who's the chair of housing and building, she could not be here today. She is preparing for the hearing that we are about to go into. But to really kind of like bring it all together, I want to bring up uh, Liz, a tenant, and someone from Cooper Square. Cooper Square Committee has been organizing to keep people in their homes and in their communities in the downtown area, in the Lower East Side, where I grew up for decades. Their work around lead free homes ensuring that people uh, have the right air quality, that we're looking at warehousing, that we're organizing for tenant safety. Okay. They have been absolutely incredible and at the forefront of that housing movement. So if I could bring up Liz uh, now to say a few words. Woo! Uh, El pueblo unido. Jamás será vencido. El pueblo 
Unido jamás se ha vencido. Unido jamás se ha vencido. Egregiously. 
not only was there harassment and deprivation of services and frivolous litigation, but he threatened tenants in there with ICE and with a call to the immigration authorities to threaten their livelihood and their very existence where they had built a home. So all of this is it's happening. It has been happening for decades. I remember a building in East 13th Street on the Coladano when I was a housing organizer at Good Old Lower East Side. That was well over 10 years ago. So this has been ongoing. It's time. We need the data. We want to pass this bill. So I want to thank everybody here for coming out. Thank you so much. to make sure that tenants are safe. So let's walk over to City Hall into the hearing chamber and pass intro 195. Yeah. Yeah. There is a call to action. You heard that it's been going on a long time. We have to mandate inspections. We need to ensure that the tenants feel like they're being heard and this bill would do just that. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Please give me a round of applause.